Hello, welcome. This is Fergus Nickel with the BBC's World Business Report. The wildfires in California continue to burn. In terms of fatalities and damage done, they're the worst ever in the state. President Trump has approved what he called on Twitter an expedited request for a major disaster declaration, and that should trigger federal assistance through FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Over the weekend, the president angered a lot of people in California by tweeting that the fires had been caused by poor forest management. I asked Rich Gordon, CEO of the California Forestry Association, how he responded to that charge. First of all, it should be understood by everyone that in California, 60% of the forests are owned by the federal government. There is 2% that is owned by the California state government and the balance is privately owned. So part of the, the problem, if there is a problem of management, has been uh, management on for federal lands. And actually, California has been doing a very good job and is uh, improving its forest management. This year, the state government uh, allocated one billion U.S. dollars over the next five years for forest management. Historically, our forests are overgrown. Uh, we have too many trees. And when you have uh, too much fuel, you have climate change, which has brought about hotter temperatures. All you need is a single spark and you've got a disaster on its way. When you say too many trees, just expand on that, because I know there's been a lot of discussion about the density of tree growth, uh, the, the size of the trees that are allowed to exist in managed circumstances. When the Europeans first arrived in California, what they discovered were forests with about 40 trees to an acre. Today, we have hundreds and hundreds of trees to an acre. We have uh, aggressively suppressed fire, which has uh, saved trees. Uh, and we have uh, had the strictest timber harvest rules in the world, which has reduced our timber production. Um, and so our forests are simply just overgrown. Uh, and when you have too many trees, you get a drought or uh, hot climate conditions, those trees get stressed and are even then more prone uh, to be uh, fuel for fire. When the trees were thinner, what would happen with a fire of this scale had it happened 150 years ago? It would have burned the brush, but not the upper growth, or what? Exactly. It, it, and, and what would happen is that the fire would stay on the ground. Today, with the, the density of our forests, the smaller trees in the forest uh, essentially serve as ladders to take the fire up off the for forest floor and take it into the crown. And once you get into the crown and you've got a crown fire going on, uh, then you've got sparks and embers flying all over the place. Uh, in uh, previous conditions, when we had fewer trees, uh, fire would stay low to the ground. It would clear out the brush and the undergrowth. It would uh, perhaps scar the bark on a larger tree, uh, but the tree would still survive and continue to grow. The natural condition uh, that was always in place in California has been disrupted uh, by our um, uh, aggressive fire suppression over the years. Yeah, prompted by the environmental lobby, presumably, because I know they're going to say, listening to this, you just want to chop down trees because you make money chopping down trees. In California, uh, we have 30 timber companies. Uh, they are all family owned. We don't have any multinational timber companies. Uh, they all left California when California introduced its strict timber harvest rules. But what we have are families who own the, the land. They're great stewards of the land and their managed lands um, are surviving better than the unmanaged private land uh, outside of industrial timber and the unmanaged federal land. To simply say, let trees burn, uh, let there be fire or don't trim trees uh, and don't reduce the fuel load uh, is unfortunately, I think, irresponsible in California. Do you think the fact that these fires are happening more frequently and on a much greater scale is going to reduce the kind of opposition that you found in that thinning argument? Well, I would, I would point out this, that this year uh, our California legislature uh, enacted a major forestry uh, initiative revising uh, some of the forest practice rules, uh, allowing for more thinning, making it easier for a small landowner uh, to trim around their uh, property, uh, and uh, providing, as I said, um, $200 million a year uh, each for the next five years for forest management. That was done in the state legislature uh, on a bipartisan basis. Uh, there were two or three environmental groups who opposed it, but the vast majority joined on and said, it is time for us to start thinning and let's thin responsibly. That's Rich Gordon of the California Forestry Association. There are some who